Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Blazing Lord from the Scions of the Flame War Cry War Band. And here he is, another great looking miniature, all glued and primed and ready to go. For the prime and paint, I used the Citadel Colour Wraithbone, which is a contrast undercoat, Citadel Plastic Glue, and the brush I used was the Wargamer Character Brush by Army Painter. Right, let's get started. And first I took some base ceramic white from Citadel. You could probably use like white scar maybe for this as well, or any Vallejo paint. And I went over all the flames with this white paint because I want them to be a little bit brighter and have a brighter undercoat than that wraith bone. I also looked at where I'd done the um, spraying and priming and where it was kind of patchy or within the crevices where it didn't go in too much, I just put a little bit of that base coat on that as well. You could get some Wraithbone base paint, which would probably be better than what I did here, but the white did the job. Once that base had dried, I took some Contrast Fire Slayer Flesh, and I just went in doing all the areas of flesh and torso that you can see. There's a tiny bit here, and a little bit on the back of the head as well. I could have put the mask on later and painted the face and then glued the mask on, but I figured I would just use a wash to fill in all the features from the front. Next, I took some Ayandan yellow, and this is going to be for the handle of the sword. There's only a few little bits of the handle showing through, uh, so this is quite a quick stage, and I just put a little bit there on every bit that we can see. On some of the other models I painted, the handles are a lot longer, and you can get a real cool effect with the contrast paint by doing it in a couple of layers, so it's darker at the base, getting lighter as it moves up. And you can see that on the Inferno Priest. But next I went on to the flames, and with that same yellow, then the Griffhound orange, and flesh tear as red, we're gonna start with a wet blend of the small flame on the sword, and also the flames on that headpiece. The first step for this wet blend technique with the contrast paints is to cover all the flames with the yellow, and just leave a tiny bit of the flame white where it meets the sword and this just gives an indication of where the flame starts. With the contrast paints it's important not to go over other areas where you're going to apply contrast paint but with the sword we're going to use a lead belcher base later on and that's going to cover up any mistakes we make so you don't have to be too careful at this stage. Okay so that's the yellow applied to the whole flame and while it's still wet I go straight into the Griffhound orange and I'm looking to cover now about 60 to 65% of the flame, working from the tip of the flame down, and then I'm gonna to start to blend that in with the yellow. So at the tip of the flame working down, I want it really orange, but where it meets that yellow, I want it to fade out. So I take a tiny bit more of the yellow paint and just dot it around where the two colors meet. And now I'm going, again, it's wet, so I'm going straight in with the red over that wet orange and yellow. And now I'm looking to do about 30%. So working from the tip of the flame down for 30% coverage with the red. Then I take some orange and then I'm going to blend that red into the orange and just dot it in and make it so it kind of fades. I chose to go quite red and orange with these flames, but you could go with kind of any ratio of this. So you could do like 100% yellow, 50% orange, maybe 20% red. So it's really up to you and how you want your models to look. Then to make this really blend nicely, I'm going back and forth with a bit of yellow, a bit of orange, and just making it so it looks nice and blended. If there's too much paint, I'm wiping my brush on some kitchen roll and then wicking it away. But really, you have to be quite bold with this technique and uh, just get the paint on there and let it do its job. While that's still wet, I took some Contrast Black Templar, and with a tiny bit of paint, I'm just putting a little dot of black on the tips of the flames. And this is just to give the idea of the flames turning into smoke. I did that same process on the flames for the headpiece, and that's the stage is all complete for the fire. Now it's time for the leather and all the straps, so I took some contrast snake bite leather, and this is a really great paint with one coat will give us some really nice shade and some nice highlights. And I start applying it all over that leather armour there. And one thing I've learned online watching other videos is that it's good to end your brush stroke where you want most of the paint to build up and that's especially true with these contrast paints. So I'm putting quite a lot on my brush, really loading it with paint, and starting where I want most of the paint to build up, and then working my brush, moving it around, 
and guiding the contrast paint into all the kind of recesses and where I want the shade to be darkest. The key with these contrast paints is to put it on but then move it around with your brush so that it doesn't pull in areas where you want a highlight. If it does start to do that, you can just dry off your brush quickly on some towel and then wick that away. But you can see here the effect that, that just that one coat of contrast gives us and it's really fast as well. With the leather complete, we're going back to the contrast black Templar and now we're going to do the shoes and the gloves. And with this just one coat, but it's important to put this Black Templar on quite thick. I did two coats on some other models and it just looked too dense, that colour, and it didn't give us any highlights. Uh, so I found it's better to just do one thick coat and then that gives some nice highlights and it works really well for like a black leather effect. If it's not dark enough for you, you can just take a little bit more and do a second coat just going over where it meets other pieces of material or where there's a darker recess. You could even add some contrast medium and start doing some kind of different layers and almost glazing it in. But for me, just one coat is enough for this battle ready tabletop standard that I'm looking for. With the gloves, I went for a coat not quite as thick because I felt that this was going to be getting much more highlight and also some of the light coming from that flame. So I just did a kind of one coat, but just not as thick as the shoes. Next it's time to do the trousers, so with some Basilicanum Grey, I took that just with one coat and nice and thick again, and this is going to go over all the trouser material, which is close to the boots, and this is kind of light enough to be a contrast between the black and the grey. And because I'm going to be using other contrast paints here, I'm being extra careful not to get any on that other leather strap that goes around the leg there, so I'm just taking my time and working that paint in pushing it so that there's more paint building up in the darker parts and where I want most of that shadow and then just being patient to push it around and guide it where I want it to end up. Next we're going to take some contrast pterodon turquoise and this is going to be for those awesome looking scale cloaks that these miniatures wear and these are from the beasts I imagine that they slay out in the wilderness. So this has gone, it's gone a bit blurry here but we're going to come back into focus in a second. There we go, that's better. So you can see I'm putting lots of paint on now. I'm really pushing it into those areas of shadow. And this is such a, a great colour. I really like this contrast paint. And it goes on in one coat, really dark and really bold. This is going to be the only part of the miniature that we do some different techniques on. And I'm just going to do some dry brushing on this once this is completely dry. And that's going to really bring those scales to life and is going to leave them looking really cool. You could just go with this one coat of the turquoise and um, the highlights are still coming through a little bit but I really wanted those to pop so that extra highlight is going to really be a nice effect on these. Once that turquoise had dried I took some of the ceramic white base paint and I just went over the areas where I'd been a bit messy with the contrast paint and certainly on the back here where the scale cloak meets the other material. I wanted to tidy that up and make sure the next layer of contrast paint that's going to go on that material underneath, which is going to be orange, I wanted that to have a solid white background. So I put the base paint on there just to make that nice and neat and make sure we get a tidy coat next. While that white was drying, I took some contrast skeleton hoard. And this is a great paint for things like claws and teeth and skeletons. So I put that on the claws that is attached to this scale kind of armor material and that's a really nice finish for those and it looks a, like a really natural color that leaves some really good shadows while allowing some highlight to come through too. With the contrast paints some are like thicker and darker than others so it's just getting used to the different colors and how much you can put on and then the effect you get when it dries so this is really nice for this kind of thing it's a nice light brown but you get a quite a dark shadow with it so it works really well. So with all those paints dry now, I took the Griffhound orange and then I'm going to paint all the material that goes around underneath the scale cloak there. And for this, I really put a lot of paint on my brush because I want those shadows to be really dark. And you can see I'm pushing it in. So where it meets the other materials, we're going to get a nice shadow line. And also into the recesses, I'm ending my brush stroke there so that lots of paint's going to build up and it's going to be a real rich, dark shadow. 
on the flatter, more raised areas and on, on the edges of the material, I want that to be a lot paler and a lot lighter as a highlight. So I kind of make sure that no paint's building up there. And if it is, I just kind of wick it away with my brush and then just spread it into the areas where I want it to be darker. And just taking care here where it meets that the other materials and just pushing it in and just taking my time and gently working it through. And you can see it takes a little while to dry, so you've got plenty of time to keep moving it around until you're happy with it. But once it does start to dry, there's got a, there's a point where you've got to stop working it as you can rub it off and then it, it leaves kind of like a little little line between where it's pulled and where it's kind of dried on the flatter areas. I found by the time I'd done this warband and got to my third or fourth fighter within it, I'd quickly got used to the how the contrast paints worked and um, there's plenty of time to get the effects you want. And so here we go, exactly the same in the front, starting where I want it to be darker, pushing it in and then working it down and spreading it across all the material. And we're going to let this orange dry completely because we want to put another coat of a different colour contrast paint on it at a later stage and that's going to make it a lot deeper and darker and really start it to work it with the other colours. So while that was drying I took some white, green and blue all from Vallejo and you could use any of these as long as they're dark colours and then I placed them on my wet palette and just mixed them all together and so I wanted to make some highlights here so I got an old scruffy brush and mixed a nice dark teal and I wanted two different colour highlights so I've got a dark teal which I then took a little bit of that and added it to white to make a lighter teal and that's going to go over the scales and really bring them to life with a nice couple of highlights. With this dry brushing I just load up the brush and then wipe as much paint as I can off on some paper towel and then lightly start adding it to the model so you can see here there's hardly any paint going on and it's better to do it in little stages and build it up rather than putting too much on and kind of painting it on. You want to like dry brush rub the paint off the brush onto there in, in small stages. This will be a lot harder to cover up so it's better just to take your time and put it on a little bit at a time. And I kind of put in more paint on the raised areas where the highlight's going to be stronger. Uh, trying to avoid the areas of shadow and then catching the edges as well. And with that first one done and dry, I moved on to the brighter highlight. And then you can see I'm starting again there on those raised areas. Putting quite a bit more on because that's going to really catch the light. Especially the light coming from the flames in the headpiece. And then working my way down, catching the edges, but not going into the shadows too much. You can see here the colours I used for the highlights are quite dark on the palette. And on the paper towel they're dark as well. But on the model they look quite light. But with this contrast paint, it's a really dark turquoise as you can see here on the towel. So it just shows that highlights don't have to be light, they can actually be quite dark. Right, now I'm going to take some more of that contrast snake bite leather. And I just want to make this area of straps here a little bit darker because that's going to get some shadow cast from his shoulder as well as a little bit of light from the flame of the torch. But I want to make that really deep shadow there. So I, I put quite a lot on my brush and I really work it into where the two bits of leather meet. But I try and leave a line all around the edge so we get a really strong highlight there. And this just putting two coats of snake bite leather like this is just going to make it a little bit different to the leather armour. At this stage the orange cloth is completely dry so I took some technical contrast medium and flesh terra red and I mixed three parts contrast medium to two parts red and then mix that together really well and you can play around with the ratio of medium to paint here but I just want this to be quite dark for the shadows but not too dark that we lose all the orange. I certainly just keep to the griffhound orange here but I thought it needed a bit more red and I was kind of following the pictures from the Catacombs book and it showed it more of a red colour so I wanted to kind of copy that. Uh, so I put on another thick coat of paint over that red material and then I'm really working it in to the shadows again trying to leave the highlighted areas as orange as possible so we get a nice contrast there but just so I'm just spreading it out and wiping away most of the paint off that section but making sure my brush finishes where I want most of the paint and shadow to build up. There we go, that's most of the contrast paint applied now and that red really changed the whole tone of the piece and works really well against that pterodon turquoise colour. 
Now we're going to take the lead belcher base paint and apply that to all the metal. So the sword, the mask, those braided pieces and the headpiece. And this is going to be put on for all the metal that we want, gold, silver or bronze. So this is a great base for any metal. I wasn't sure if those braided pieces were meant to be metal or not, but I thought it made a good contrast because we've got lots of organic materials going on with the armour and the cloth. So I think there's a nice contrast there with the metal against that. So next I took some agarus dunes and made sure that lead belcher was completely dry and that's really important for this stage. And I just started applying the agarus dunes to all the areas I wanted to be a gold brassy colour. You could use other contrast paints for this. I've used um, Gilliam and Flesh certainly on a lot of the terrain I built. That looked really good on the bridge for example for a nice old brass effect. But I'm using it here on the mask, the handle and also on the sword just to give an effect where the the sword is like getting hot near the flame so you see i just use my finger to wipe off any excess there and drag it down the blade but i'm going to be adding some known oil over this as well so we get like a two-tone effect on there and it's just going to be a subtle way of just kind of giving the idea that metal's hot but i've learned from the terrain that i painted that these contrast paints work really well over lead belcher and you can get lots of different effects by trying the different ones. You could use blues, reds, any colours you like for different metals. Now I've got my known oil shade. And this isn't the gloss, this is just the matte one. And that's going to go over all the silver paint and covering all the different areas of the braids, really getting into the shadow. So just like the contrast paints, I'm really pushing it in there. And I'm putting some on the mask as well to make it nice and dark, especially in those shadow areas, all over the top of the headpiece and on the blade too. I wanted the mask to be a little bit more gold so I took some more of that agarus dunes and I applied that over the mask and I did this when the null oil was still wet so it's kind of like a wet blend and that made it kind of really like a dirty look to it but there it is I think that looks better than leaving it silver. We're onto the final stage and with some Vallejo 0.997 silver I'm going to do some edge highlighting on the blades and all the silver and gold metals. On some of the first models I painted this warband, I was being really careful with the edge highlighting and I wasn't putting enough on there. So with this one, I just went a little bit heavier and put more on along the edge. Also put a little bit in the middle and you can see it didn't go on too neat, but by the time it dried, you couldn't really see that it looked as scruffy as it does here. And now I'm just finishing off that mask with some highlighting and I'm going a bit heavier here on the brush because we've got the flame in the headpiece. So that's gonna create a bit more highlight. I'm just putting it all over the horns there and a little bit on the face, on the on the brow where it's raised and those kind of bits around the cheeks there. I want them to catch a lot of the highlight. And there we go. There's our finished Blazing Lord, all tabletop, battle ready, standard, all with contrast paints. I really like the contrast paints. I think as a beginner, there's something you can quickly get into and get some achievable results that you're happy with. And once you start building that confidence, you can move on to uh, more advanced techniques. But for me, this is definitely the way to go. I hope this video helps you with your painting. And if you'd like to see how I painted the other members of the warband, then please check out my other videos on the channel. All the paints and techniques I used in this video are the same for all the other miniatures, so you can apply them to them. But if you wanted to see the individual videos, they're there for you. And I've also put links to all the paints in the description below. There'll be affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it's going to save you up to 20% with Element Games. And for every sale made, I get a small commission and that's going to help me develop the channel. And I'm really grateful for that support. If you'd like to see how I made the bases, I've made a video on that too. And that shows you how I made the kind of wasteland, rocky bases for the miniatures. I've also done another video on how to fix the miniatures to those bases if you choose to paint them separately. And I think this gives you more control and you can get more detail in the bases doing it that way. So check those out on my channel too. I hope these videos are all helpful to you and thanks so much for watching. Please like the video if you like it, subscribe for more content like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.